My dear friends in Christ, I have the pleasure to welcome every one of us and we ask Almighty God to minister this night once more and bless everyone in Jesus' name. Amen. We are going to take a very short reading from Exodus chapter 34, verse 6. Exodus chapter 34, verse 6. And the Bible says, The Lord is a God of mercy, and He is gracious, slow to anger, and abounding in love, and He is faithful. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. This is the message that God is giving to his people. King James Version says, Exodus chapter 34, verse 6, Then the Lord passed by in front of him, and they proclaimed, The Lord, the Lord, compassionate and gracious, slow to anger, and abounding in loving kindness and truth. <laughs> that is our God, the Yahweh, the God who is merciful. God wants to talk to us about his nature. Many people have misconstrued understanding of God. And so they perceive him in a way that he does not even show his nature as. And so this nice message is an opportunity for us to know God in the way he revealed himself to Moses. In Exodus chapter 34, verse 6, as a merciful God, as God who is gracious, as God who is slow to anger, as God who is abounding in steadfast love, and God who is faithful to his words and promises. If I may ask you, how do you describe your God? As a mean man? <laughs> Remember the parable of the talents. Jesus told us in that story how a landowner, an estate owner, you know, gave five talents to one of his servants. Ten talents to another servant, but gave one talent to the third servant and told them to take care of these talents. And he went into a country, he traveled, and then by the time he came back, years had passed. And he wanted to find out what have you done with the talents that I have given to you. The one that was given five was able to give increase. He was able to return more than what was given to him, as well as the one that was given ten talents. But the one that was given one talent quickly went to the ground where he buried the talent, exhumed it, and he said, Take! Talking to his master rudely, he said, why did you not make use of this talent I've given to you? He said, you are a mean man, reaping where you did not sow. And the master said, okay, if you know that I reap where I did not sow, why didn't you go and put it at least in the treasury, at least in the bank, and then it will yield some interest? There is a lesson in that message which we usually ignore. And that is the message that when God gave those talents to those 
three men or servants. He gave them time. He gave them time to see what will come out at the end. To see what they will do with the talent. It wasn't the next day that the master came. It wasn't the next month. He took time, years. By the time he was coming, he came at a time that what he gave to them must have been able to bear fruit. And that tells us that God is patient. He's always patient with us. He demonstrated that patience even in the dispensation of his gifts upon each and every one of us. He gives us time to develop the gifts given to us and then to bear fruit. So our God is a patient God. He cannot separate patience from mercifulness of God. So God is patient and he is merciful. But look at the way the servant that was given one talent saw the master. He saw the master as a mean man. I mean, I wonder where the man was even mean. Was he mean and gave you a talent? Perhaps he was not happy with the higher talents given to the others, but he would have made use of the one given to him. There are people in life who were given one talent, but they make good use of it. Some of them even did better than those with ten talents. But in all this, God is watching, God is patiently waiting on us to put into use what he has given to us. And so, through the matter of Moses, we hear the prophecy that God is a merciful God and who is gracious, slow to anger, and abounding in steadfastness and faithfulness. We're going to take it bit by bit. We're going to digest each of these attributes of God. So, Father Almighty, we thank you for revealing to us who you are, your characteristics in Exodus chapter 34, verse 6. And even now, through the ministry and power of the Holy Spirit, you are going to speak to us. Father, open our minds, open our hearts, that we shall understand the way you want us to understand this message. And let, us, let this message give us a deeper enlightenment of you, of who you are. And let us be able to embrace you, Lord, as a loving Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now, the first. God told Moses that he is a merciful God. That is to say, the Lord is merciful. The Lord is merciful. You see? When you say that somebody is merciful, you see that that person does not bring quick judgment on people. The person is patient. The person understands and shows understanding. <laughs> then you say that the person is merciful. Somebody who exercises mercy, who shows mercy. And that's the nature of our God. You see that? Jesus. And God is calling on us to be merciful like Him. Now, in this period of Lent, we are called to be merciful, to be forgiving. To show understanding. This is one of the core messages and the require, demands of the Lent. The Lord is merciful. This word evokes a tender approach 
like that of a mother towards her child. You see the way a, a mother takes care of her child. You see a picture of mercy, a picture of compassion. Even when the child is, mother is merciful. You see that? Even the mercy of God is even compared with the compassion of a mother. Remember Isaiah chapter 6 to 6 verse 13. As a mother shows compassion on her children, so shall I show compassion on you. So you see God using that character of a mother and using it to describe his mercifulness. And this is very important for us to understand this attribute of God so that we don't waste our time condemning ourselves that God is mean to me. God is not fair to me. God is, because of the sins I committed 20 years ago, uh, God, uh, God has abandoned me. That is not God. That's not how he behaves. That's not how he behaves. God is a merciful God. He gives us time to change and then he gets to deep extent to see us change. He helps us to change. He brings grace, avalanche of grace, you know, for us to change. That's the image of God. You see that? God is moved to compassion. He softens for us like a mother. You see, a, a mother will see the child falling on the ground. The, the mother will not leave the child. The mother will go and meet the child. Put the child in, in her arms. And then if the child is you know, is wounded, the mother will bandage the child, will nurse the child, will take care of the child. You see that? When Jesus was born, according to the tradition of the Jews, he had to undergo what is called a circumcision. So when he was circumcised, there was wounds on the body of Jesus. Mary will nurse Jesus. She nursed Jesus. We don't need to wait to see that in the scripture before we know that there's no way Mary will ignore the, the wounds on, on Jesus when he was circumcised. She nursed him. That's the, the, the spirit of a mother. And God is saying, as a mother nurses her child, so I also nurse you. So I bandage you. Remember Jeremiah chapter 30 verse 17b. He said, and I will bandage your wounds. Who is talking? That's God. I will bandage your wounds. I will heal you. I'm your healer. <laughs> That's a God of mercy. That's a God of mercy. If you look at Jeremiah 8, verse 22, God was not speaking to the prophet Jeremiah. Is there no balm in Gilead? Is there no physician there? Why then is not the health of my daughter? Why then is not the health of my children? Why then is the health of my son not, not okay? Why are my people sick? You see the voice of compassion, the, the voice of concern. God is concerned about what we are going through. And he wants to do something about it. You know, there's no mother who will look at a child who is hungry and ignore the child. The child will look unto the mother. And the mother understands when the child is sick, understands when the child is hungry, understands when the child is feeling like sleeping. And she understands. And she does something about it right away. <laughs> So God is using this picture of a mother to describe his promptness to show mercy. That's no way a mother will forget her child. Well, I know that some mothers do. 
But that, that's no more a mother. That's no more a mother. The Bible says, in Isaiah chapter 49, verse 15, can a mother forget the baby, you know, at her breast and have no compassion on the child that she has born? Now, this is a question the Bible is asking. Can a mother do that? And maybe you may tell me, oh, okay. you might see the woman give birth to a baby and threw it and put that baby in the trash. I know some women do that. But that's not the spirit of a mother. That's not the spirit of a mother. That's wickedness. That's the devil at work. A true mother shows compassion. A true mother cannot forget her child. A true mother will make sure there's peace in the house. She will not steer commotion among the children. Some mothers do that. When they do that, they don't, they don't want mothers. Does God want to see peace in the house? Of course, yes. Did he not tell us, my peace I give unto you, not as the word give it. This is Jesus talking. Who himself is the Prince of Peace. He is the Prince of Peace. <laughs> he wants to see peace in the family. He wants us to... He wants to see us live harmoniously. He wants to see harmony. Praise the Lord. So he wants to bring peace everywhere. Whatever there is the peace, there is the Spirit of Christ. And so he comes to give peace. Remember John 14, verse 27? Peace, my peace, I live with you. My peace, I give to you. Not as the world gives, do I give. And then he says, let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. The same thing he says in John 14 verse 1. Let not your heart be troubled. Trust in God, also trust in me. Believe in me. This is Jesus talking. He is talking to us to believe, to trust that he is a message for God. Many do not see him that way. But God is a for God. Even in Isaiah 45 and 15, where he's asking a question, can a mother forget her child? He, asked that, he, asked, he answered that question saying, though she may forget, but I will not forget you. Wow. Though she may forget, but I will not forget you. Then in Isaiah 49 verse 16, the scripture says, look, behold, I have inscribed your name. On the palms of my hands. I have written your name. Inside my hands. <laughs> you see that? You know what that means, right? I, I have engraved you. On the palms of my hands. I have inscribed you. In the palms. I have written your name. On the palms of my hands. Why would we not trust such a God? Why? No matter what you are passing through, know that God loves you and He's showing you mercy. <laughs> Jesus. He puts us inside Him. As a seal. As a seal. In fact, the Song of Solomon says, in, in Song of Solomon chapter 8, verse 6, he says, put me like a seal over, over your heart, and, and like a seal on your arms. That's, the, that's our God. That's our God. The God who takes you into his mighty hands, wanting like a mother, only to love, only to protect, only to help, ready to give everything, even herself. A mother wants to give everything, even herself. Wow! Did God not do that? <laughs> Jesus 
gave himself completely, nothing left. Nothing left. He gave us everything. That's the man Jesus. God gave us his son. And he was generous in giving his son completely. His son gave his entire life completely. <laughs> Jesus. Why would we not trust such a God? Why? Why? The God of mercy. <laughs> Jesus. I, I want to share with you this story. And this story, there was a, a pandemic. And there was a father who had a son. You know? And they all went to the hospital to be tested during the pandemic. They had not been infected by the deadly disease like others. And so the doctor said, Oh, you are going to make a good vaccine for a cure. And so they found out that the son had the perfect blood and made it the dad sign that he would allow his son's blood to be taken as a vaccine. But when he asked how much blood they needed, that is when the father asked, how much blood would you need from my son to be able to save these people that have been if infected with deadly disease. The doctor told the father that they needed all of the son's blood. And this father took a pen and signed, drained his blood. That father is God the Father. That boy is Jesus. God gave all of his blood, drop by drop, for our sins. Jesus gave everything, asking for nothing in return. <laughs> Even though that this story is metaphoric, but it, it unveils the extent of God's mercy, God's love for his people. It shows the depth of God's compassion. From the moment of creation to the giving of His only Son to even right now, God's relationship with us is one of pouring Himself out, holding nothing back. Why would you think that such God is not merciful? God is merciful. And he wants us to come to him understanding that he is a merciful God. And I pray tonight that due to this message, let us have a new perspective about God. Sometimes we say, oh, God is merciful. But when we do certain things and we go to confession, sometimes we still live as if God has not forgiven us. But God has. And we should not go back to fish in the sea of unforgetfulness. When God has forgiven us, He throws our sins into the depths of the sea. <laughs> That's what He does. He casts our sins into the depths of the sea. Now, why would I go to the same sea and start fishing? Fishing for my sins again. But that's what we do when we live in resentments, even after we have gone to confession. That means we don't even believe that God has forgiven us. And so we go back and start fishing in the sea of forgetfulness. God says, no. Isaiah chapter 43, verse 25, the Bible says, 
I, even I, I am he who blots out your transgressions for my own sake. And I remember them no more. Merciful God. Micah chapter 7 verse 19 says, God will tread our sins on the foot and the haul all our iniquities into the depths of the sea. Correct. He puts the, the sins into the depths of the sea because he doesn't need them. He doesn't want them. He doesn't even want to remember them. So can you imagine when God has forgiven you and you see going back confessing the same sin again? Not that you have done it again. But you still you just believe, think that, oh, maybe if I confess it ten times, he will forgive me. That's lack of faith. And then you are accusing God of who is not. You are trying to say that he doesn't hear, and he doesn't forgive, and he's not merciful. This is not true. But this is the way most of us see God. So God wants to iron this out tonight. I am a merciful God, period. Amen. Father, we embrace this message. I will thank you, Father, for your mercy that you have shown to us. We live by your mercy. We wake up from sleep by your mercy. We receive all the provisions you give to us by your mercy. Father, may your mercy continue to shower up and be showered upon us in the name of Jesus. Amen. And then still in Exodus chapter 34 verse 6, God says, I am slow to anger. <laughs> I am slow to anger. Ah! God is slow to anger. A father who is slow to anger. When somebody is slow to anger, that means the person is patient. You see? The person gives time for repentance. The person gives time for a change, for improvement. That's what a loving father does. That's what God does. God knows how to wait. He knows how to wait. And He wants us to trust in Him that He is at work in our lives. And so He Himself also wants us to wait. He blesses those who wait. He gives us strength to wait. <laughs> Remember Isaiah 40 verse 31. You know, and the Bible says, and they, for them that wait upon the Lord, I will give them strength. They will fly like the eagle. They will run, but they will not weary. You see that? Waiting on the Lord. Lamentations chapter 3 verse 20 says, It is good to wait quietly for the salvation of the Lord. So God is not demanding from us what He Himself has not given us the grace and He Himself has not demonstrated. He has demonstrated that He is a God of slow to anger. You see that? God shows us this true nature of His and he wants us to believe him tonight. And God knows how to wait. He knows how to wait. His time is not the impatient one. No, he's not an impatient one. He is a patient God. He is like the wise farmer who knows how to wait. The farmer plants a seed and he waits. He waits. That's how God is. He plants, gives in us, and then He waits. He waits. Allowing time for the good seed to grow in spite of the weeds. Now, remember in Matthew chapter 13, verse 24 to 30, we, we see the story of the parable of the weeds. The farmer, that's the gardener, planted the, weed, the, the seeds, and everything was going well. But one day, his servant brought his attention. Look, master, did I not see you plant seeds in this garden? How come the weeds are also growing there? Ah, that's the enemy. The enemy came in the night and planted the weeds. 
The gardener planted seeds, but the enemy came and planted weeds. It has gone from S to W. That is switching. It has switched from seed to to weed. See that? And so the servant said, Permit me that I may go and uproot all, all those weeds. He said, No, 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 leave them, leave them. Leave them. Let them grow. Let them mature. At the end of time, at the during the harvest time, you will be able to uproot it and put them into the fire. Because if you try to do it right now, you would compromise even the the seeds. You will also uproot them and destroy them. So the father was talking to the young man, to the servant, to wait. God waits. God waits. He waits for us to change. He waits on us to repent. See what happened in in the time of Jonah when he sent him to Nineveh. God expected Nineveh to change. Nineveh didn't change. He waited. He gave them time. They didn't change. Then he sent Jonah. And even when Jonah didn't want to go, God still waited for Jonah to change, to repent. This is the nature of our God, that God is slow to anger. The kind of evil happening in the world today, do you think if God is not slow to anger, by now everywhere would have been burnt down, there would have been smoke everywhere. Look at Solomon Gomorrah. God wanted them to change, gave them time or put it to change, but it didn't change. Before he now sent down the burning sulfur. So God is slow to anger. He you know, he understands our make our making that that we are of the dust, we are weak. We are weak vessels. He may be using you, but he knows you are weak. He knows you are weak. <laughs> The Bible says we are earthen vessels holding heavenly treasures. Is that? The fact that God is using you doesn't make you too special. It's not just that by His mercy, by His grace, that He's using you. He would have chosen to use the palm tree, He would have chosen to use something else. <laughs> So when he, he comes, he puts his, his treasure, you know, the, the, the heavenly treasures, and put them inside human beings. You see a man who has, for example, the gift of healing. It is just a gift put into him. He's just a vessel. An eighteen vessel. He's just a jar. In fact, Second Corinthians chapter number 4, verse 7 says, but we have this treasure in jars of clay to show that this all-surpassing power is from God and not from us. You see, when you become proud because God has put certain things in you, certain gifts in you, it, it means that you do not understand it, really that that gift didn't come from you. It comes from God. You are just like someone holding it, a jar, a clay. <laughs> so when you understand out what is given to you is a gift, then you don't you won't use it to you won't sell it. You won't commercialize it. Freely we receive, freely we shall give. So God is slow to anger. Always looking for us, patiently looking for us, giving us opportunity to change. In the name of Jesus. And so we're asking God, who is a God who is slow to anger, let him be merciful to us in the name of Jesus. Let him help us to change. As he's waiting on us, May we change. May he never wait in vain. In the name of Jesus. The Bible says, 
Lamentation chapter 3, verse 25. The Lord is good to those who wait on Him. We pray that as God is a God who knows how to wait, may He teach us how to wait also. We cannot get something from God without having the spirit of patience waiting on the Lord. And so before God will start using you, one of the things God will do, there are so many things you do in you, but one of them is to teach you patience. To be patient. To be patient. To wait on Him. If we are the children of God, then we should be like Him. For example, He is slow to anger. That is, waiting on us. Then we also wait on Him to finish what He do in our lives. That is it. A patient man should have patient children. But many a time, we get loose. We take laws into our hands. We go into something else. May God help us to be patient like Him. To be slow to anger in Jesus' name. Amen. We use this opportunity to pray for people who have anger problem. Little things trigger them. That's one, whenever anger comes, he, he, she will be breaking televisions, break the, everything in the house, break plates. By the time the anger is down, she will start looking at the wreckage she has caused. Anger. Anger. Anger is, is a deadly spirit. Anger is different from angry. Angry is different. Let us not mistake them. You can be angry. But God said don't allow it to see the morning. In other words, that, that, that situation, you know, should be, it should be a season. It should be a momentary. It's not something that should continue all the time. God does get angry. But he's slow to anger. You see that this person is hot tempered. This person is always is, 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 is anger. Somebody can have a name anger. This is anger. That's not good. He goes beyond just ang being angry. This is now habitual and uh, habitual thing. May God deliver us from such spirits in the name of Jesus. People with anger spirits. I lift the word of God for you, for God to deliver you now in the name of Jesus. Every anger spirit in my family, in my lineage, may all of them through the word of God be uprooted now in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name. When God created you, he didn't put the anger. He didn't put a spirit. The enemy came in the night. And planted it. Look at the relationship between God and Moses. Very wonderful. But it was anger that made Moses not to see the promise, not to get into the promised land. He saw it, but he couldn't enter there. God told him to strike once the stone, the rock. They struck more than once, and God was so displeased. Anger. Anger can deny us our promised land. Anger can deny us our, of God's promises for us. Anger can delay our testimonies. Anger can cause miscarriage of our blessings. I pray that God will give us the grace to stay out of anger. And even this season of Lent, God wants us to deal with anger. He wants to deal with the anger. And the Holy Spirit is the one to make the change. It is not us. But we need to consciously on our own approach God and ask Him, Lord, help me. If I cannot do this on my own, deliver me from the spirit of anger. In the name of Jesus. Deliver my children. Deliver my spouse. Deliver my siblings. My parents from the spirit of anger. In the name of Jesus. There are families that you know them by anger. 
not normal. So this, that our family is always very angry. Always they have anger problems. A lot of people have lost their jobs because they have anger problems. Some families have closed. Relationships have been aborted. You know, marriages have been scattered because of anger. Anger problems. It's terrible. My father once told me when he was a, a growing man of uh, someone he knows very well, he said, this man, when he Anger comes on him. You know, he would drop his bag of money. Now, in those days, people would go to the market. And this man is a very wealthy man who is doing well in business. But those, those days, people carry money in bags. And they tie it to their waist. But when this man is angry, hey, yeah, 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 yeah. he will remove the, the, the money, the bag of money, so that he will be able to be free to fight. He drops it there and starts fighting. Jesus. Maybe by the time he remembers... He comes back to his senses. He was not looking for his bag of money. He's gone. Anger. Anger can make you lose your your business. Make you lose your clients. Make you lose the love of your husband or your wife or your children or your boss. And so we are dealing with something serious. I pray that God will give all the grace to have a talk to be called dangers of anger in this prayer line someday in the name of Jesus. And so Father, we lift our hands to you. We pray that as we are slow to anger, Father, may you help us also to be slow to anger. Walk in us, O oh Lord. Father, even this period of Lent, give us the grace to come out of this Lent a different man. Through this Lent, let there be spiritual metamorphosis in our lives going through spiritual changes and becoming colorful like the butterfly at the end, O oh Lord. Remove that lava of anger and give us the beauty of the butterfly of a clean heart and a forgiving heart in the name of Jesus. Amen. Jesus. Now, Still in the same Exodus chapter 34 verse 6. And God proclaimed himself as abounding in steadfast love and faithfulness. <laughs> God says he is ab ab abounding in steadfast love and faithfulness. This is our God. This is our God who is faithful to his words. When he promises, he will fulfill his promise or promises. That is our God. You see that? <laughs> Jesus. Whatever promise God has given to you, God will fulfill it because it's God. You may think it's taking time. It may tally, but that prophecy will come true because it's God. <laughs> Jesus. The Bible says in Numbers chapter 23, verse 19, that God is not man, that he should lie. Not a human being that he should change his mind. Does he speak and then not act? Does he promise and not fulfill? <laughs> this is faithfulness in action. In other words, the Bible is saying that he is no human being who is unfaithful. We are unfaithful. We are unfaithful. But God is faithful. The Bible says in Second Timothy. Chapter 2, verse 13. Even if we are unfaithful, God remained faithful, for he cannot deny himself. So it negates the character of God, you know, for him to be unfaithful. No, 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 no. He is faithful. 
When you think God is not faithful, you are saying that God is a liar. But he says, I'm not man that lied. Number 20 verse 19. That's what he's saying. <laughs> so even if what he has promised you has not come to pass, as far as it came from the mouth of God, and he says, shall I will do this? Wait for it. Wait, it will come to pass. The word of God will never fail. That's one of the things I know about God. that He, he himself does not fail. His word does not fail. Remember no, Romans chapter 9, verse 6. It is not as though God's words had failed. It is not. That is, your waiting on the Lord doesn't mean that his word has failed. It doesn't fail. <laughs> he's, he's unchangeable God. A mighty God. Why would he change? You know? <laughs> when God says, I am with you, he is with you. Matthew 20, verse 20, I will be with you to the end of time. Genesis 20, verse 15, Behold, I am with you, and will keep you wherever you go, and I will bring you back to this land. For I will not leave you until I have done what I promised you. Do you take note of that? I will not leave you until I have done what I promised you. Faithfulness. This is the integrity of God. How do you know about the integrity of a man? Integrity of a man is defined by his by how faithful he is to his words and promises. If someone tells you I will do it and he doesn't do it, and over time you notice that this is a pattern. That's some integrity. That's some faithfulness. But when a man says, I will do it, I will do it, and you know that this is the way he talks and he does it. You can't have rest of mind because you know you do it. Godly integrity. <laughs> Jesus. I pray tonight that the God who is faithful to his words will locate us even when we're not faithful in the name of Jesus. May he show us his mercy. By his mercy, may he overlook our unfaithfulness in the name of Jesus. <laughs> Jesus. The Bible says that he is abounding in steadfast love. Steadfast, steadfast. Steadfast actually means faithfulness, really. Steadfast, something that doesn't change. He's steadfast, unwavering. Unfaltering, you know, something resolute, persistent, committed, dedicated, you know, unswerving. That is steadfast. God wants us to trust in Him, to believe whatever thing He tells us. He says, I will do it, know that He will do it. Is there any promise God has given to you? He will do it. <laughs> he will do it. Jesus. Jeremiah chapter 1 verse 12 says, I am watching to see that my word is fulfilled in you. I am watching. I am watching. Jeremiah chapter 1 verse 12. I am watching to see that my word is fulfilled. Why is he watching? Because he's convinced, he's sure that it must be fulfilled. Because of his faithfulness. Because of his faithfulness. If we are faithful, then we, we should trust God that he's faithful. We will not trust God on his faithfulness. That means we are not faithful. You see that? Jesus. So this is a beautiful character of God. God is steadfast, abounding in steadfast love. Abounding. That is surplus 
love. Not only that he is steadfast in love, but he is abounding in steadfast love. Abounding. Plenty. <laughs> Plentiful. Abundance. You know? It's not scarce. This is God in action. So he says, I'm abounding in steadfast love. That is steadfast affection. This love there is reflect to affection, grace, goodness. Remember in the same Genesis, sorry, in the same Exodus chapter 34 verse 6, it actually started by saying, and my goodness will pass before you. You see that? <laughs> Exodus chapter 34 verse 6. Then the Lord passed in front of in front of him and proclaimed, The Lord, the Lord. Moses saw the goodness of the Lord passing in front of him. The God of mercy. The God of love. God is taking time to digest this into us so that we understand him. So we're able to embrace him. He's giving somebody grace tonight. He's giving somebody affection tonight. His goodness passed before Moses. Moses was never the same again since that day. His goodness surpassed through your house this night. In the name of Jesus. May you experience his goodness. May you experience his grace. May you experience his affection in your life. In the name of Jesus. <laughs> Jesus. The love of God does not depend on who we are. It does not depend on our character. He just loves. Since the rain, both for the good and for the bad. The love does not depend on human merits. It's just on His mercy. That is God. It is divine concern that is able to go beyond sin, overcome evil and forgive it. You see that? So God, who is faithful, and turns to us and says, My children, I want you to be faithful to me. Israel, I want you to be faithful. He said, Go back to your first love. That would take his rights. Go back to your first love. That is, go back to your faithfulness. Go back. To my relationship with you. Begin to be a man of prayer. Revelation chapter 2 verse 4 says, Yet I hold this against you. You have forsaken the love you had at first. Many of us used to be very powerful in prayer before. We used to have night vigils. We used to pray all the time. Pray our rosary all the time. Go to Mass. Go to Blessed Sacrament. Have a quiet time. Read the Bible. What is happening now? God says, Revelation chapter 2 verse 4, I hold this against you. You have, a, you have forsaken. You have abandoned the love you had at first. Let's go back. Let's show our faithfulness to God by seeking His face. Jesus. That's what God is talking to us. This message is coming because it's a time of Lent. And God wants us to undergo transformations. He is the one to transform us, but He wants us to come to Him and ask Him to help us. That's our God. For today, let us forgive we have offended us. Let us not pay evil back for the evil people have done against us. This way we are showing love and faithfulness in the name of Jesus. Abounding in love. God is wonderful. Abounding in faithfulness. That's how God really ended that Exodus chapter 34 verse 6. He concluded that verse by saying that God is 
abounding in faithfulness. What describes the faithfulness of God? They say, I am abounding in faithfulness. That's the revelation of God to Moses. But that's our, the God's revelation to you tonight. Faithfulness is mercy. Faithfulness in mercy is the very being of God. Faithfulness in mercy. Can you think about it? Think about that. It is the very being of God. And so for this reason, God is totally and always trustworthy. This is the assurance of our faith. Thus, in this year, God is calling us to trust Him. Totally. And as we do this, we shall experience the joy of the Lord. The joy of being loved by God. You see? By being loved by God who loves us so much. Being loved by God who is merciful, who is gracious, who is slow to anger, and who is abounding in love and abounding in faithfulness. Shall we pray? Holy Father, we thank you for bringing us into your classroom this night, giving us a lecture, a teaching on your attributes, your merciful attributes. You reveal that to us even through your servant, St. Faustina, the Apostle of Divine Mercy. You reveal to the world through her apostolate that in John 19, verse 34, where your side was ripped open by a lance, that the blood and water gushing forth is the ocean of mercy for the whole world. Mighty God, we thank you for revealing this truth. And now may that precious blood wash us tonight in the name of Jesus. Father, have your way. Father, you are wonderful. May we experience your mercy, experience your graciousness, your slow to anger, experience your merciful and faithfulness. Jesus, you are faithful in mercy. You are a wonderful God. Lord God, we thank you for being so loving and merciful to us. We bring before you, Lord, the situations in the world where killing of human life has become a culture. And we are living in a culture of death, ignoring and rejecting the culture of life and love. Father, have mercy on us. Father, may your mercy surround us in our going out and coming in. Father, we lift our children to you. Show them your mercy, Lord. We lift our families to you. Families of everyone in the world, every soul in the world, Father, we lift to you tonight. Be merciful, Lord. We pray for people who are right now in the hospital who are sick. Father, be merciful. Heal them, Lord. Touch them with your healing power. Who can heal them if not you? Jesus. Jesus. Holy Father, many of us think that you have forsaken us. But yet you tell us in Isaiah 49 verse 16 that you have engraved us in the palm of your hands. Father, we pray that for such people, we pray for forgiveness. And at the same time, Father, we pray that you visit them at their point of need. Show them your mercy tonight. Yes, my Lord. Show mercy to Zion, O Lord. 
Tisos. Fada comme un tekova. In Exodus 34 verse 6, you pass in front of, a, of your son Moses. And you proclaim that the Lord, the Lord, compassionate and gracious. Father, may you pass before your children tonight and leave a trail of fire in our life. Leave a trail of healing in our life, O oh God. Leave a trail of, of fire, the trail of forgiveness, the trail of faithfulness. Help us, Lord. Touch us, Lord. Cover us with your fire. Cover us with your cloak. Cover us with your glory. Visit us, O Lord. Many that have said what they're not supposed to say because in the season of difficulties, they thought that you have for, forgotten them. Father, I will ask for forgiveness. Father, show mercy, Lord. Jesus. Those who have forsaken the love, their first love, that they used to have with you. Father, I will pray for mercy. Let there be revival in the land. In the name of Jesus. We we'll give you all the glory, O Lord. May we never violate your covenant with us. Psalm 89, verse 34 says, My covenant I will not violate. Jesus. My covenant I will not violate. Nor will I alter the utterance of my lips. Father, this is you talking. Help us, Lord. That we should always remember your your covenant and keep your covenant. Father, help us, Lord. Strengthen us and fortify us. Let your mercy reign. Thank you, Lord. In the things we're not supposed to do that we have done, Father, show mercy. In what we are supposed to do that we did, but we took the glory, instead of giving you the glory, Father, have mercy. Those who are struggling with exams, who have been writing exams for years, for over time, they're not passing. Father, oh Lord, show them mercy and grant them victory tonight. In the name of Jesus. Jesus, Father, have your way. We'll give you all the glory. We'll give you all the worship. We'll give you all the adoration. In the name of the Father and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen, and amen, and amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.